Fine Alley Show on K Rock. Cannot wait to introduce you all to Nick Kroll. Although, of course, you know Nick for a variety of things, including Big Mouth. Big Mouth Live is going to be happening as part of Netflix as a joke. There's so many. Ali and I are trying to keep track of just all the events that are going on. I don't know how anyone can keep track of it. It seems like every venue. They're all awesome, and there's so many. It's overwhelming. Yeah, but this one's very cool because, it's first of all, it's at the Greek, which, you know, is magical. If not one of the best, one of the best venues. And then it's happening on May 2nd, and. Nick will break down exactly what's going to go on there, but I would imagine if you are as into Big Mouth as you know many people are, I think it broke some sort of Netflix records. It's weird as an adult that I'm watching animated adolescents ask questions and go through the same things that I should know the answers to now. Mm-hmm. Like I've actually made kids, and I still am like, hold on, quiet, I got to hear what they say here. Yeah, but I, I need also to learn about my when body. Big Mouth came out. It was insane how many people recommended it to me. And it's just one of those shows where you want, like, once people discovered it, they wanted to convert as many people as possible. And I think that really helped boost their numbers. I mean, they're doing amazing. Nick, of course, co-creator, writer, producer, and performs not one, not two, but over 30 voices on that show. Will my mic make it through the interview? Let's find out. Nick, do you get paid separately for all 30 characters, or do they lump it all together? I wish. I, 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 I wish I got paid for every single character. I, no, I get a, uh, I get paid just for K-Rock interviews. That's the only thing. <laughs> oh, at least someone does. Oh, Jesus. man. I hope you make more than we do. <laughs> Thanks for uh, being on with us. Congratulations. We're very excited about this event that's happening uh, May 2nd. And you've got obviously a lot of stars stopping by and voices from the show that will be joining you. Anything you would like to spill on the airwaves so that people will immediately gobble up any remaining tickets? Well, I think I've spilled plenty on Big Mouth. Um, so I think, uh, I, but I will say we, you know, what I think people saw the Big Mouth live and I, in talking to people, I think a lot of people thought it was going to be like a live table read of the show, which could be great. But this show is kind of, is so much more um, because, I mean, we're on K-Rock. There's like a ton of, you know, there's a ton of music on Big Mouth. And, um, and so we're going to have a, a bunch of musical performances. Cool. Some insane surprise guests, both from the show, but also people popping in to do some extra voices. Uh, we did a song, uh, season one, John Mulaney sings. Um, and uh, we had the, the ghost of Freddie Mercury sing on that song. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were not able to lock down the ghost of Freddie Mercury oh. for the show, but... I'll just say we got literally the next best thing. Um, and obviously, John Mulaney's going to be there. Maya Rudolph, uh, Kristen Wiig is coming, uh, Jesse Klein, Jason Mantzoukas, um, Richard Kind, uh, all the other. Maria Bamford's going to do some, some stand-up. So it's all these people are all part of Big Mouth. Um, and this show is going to be sort of a mix of you know, music and, and and some stuff from the show, voices from the show, some behind-the-scenes stuff, also people just sort of talking about their own puberty and experience. So it's going to be, and it's at the Greek, and, and so it's got, you know, the, as you guys said, the Greek is one of the best places in L.A. to, mm. to see a show, and so we're, we're excited to kind of ma- make this really big once-in-a-lifetime event. Uh, puberty is such a monumental moment in anyone's life, and I feel like here I am now in my 40s. I've never had a wet dream in my life. I'm so bummed out about this because I feel like it's one of the few gifts that you get. Uh, that, yeah. that, that, and I see it, and then obviously, you know, you guys covered in the show. Did uh, you ever have boner during class? Oh, all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Right, I have one right now. Never, but but the reality is that uh, I never, I, whenever, like, you know, they always say you can't be killed in your dreams. Whenever I'm about to, like, something good is going to happen yeah. in a dream, I wake myself up. Is that uh, normal, Nick? You know, it is, and I'm glad we're, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad we can use this as a therapy session mm-hmm. for you and your, your nocturnal almost emissions. Almost. But I think it is. I mean, it's we. Ironically, we we we've we've shown that on the show, and and you know we've got one more season, season eight, and that is a question that has come up a ton. Then we try to help answer those those questions. Um, the bottom line is, and that's the key with puberty. I think is, and I remember when I was a kid, there was like one video about puberty called like "Am I Normal?" And yeah. I think yeah. a lot of people feel that about their puberties and even now and after eight seasons of big seven seven that have aired you know it's still a question that we're getting and it's still even as you're a man in your 40s like that's what's so crazy about puberty is like you know you're a full adult man and you're still wondering if you're normal 
Um, and the answer is no. Yeah, in your we know case. that. But, you. I, but, I, <laughs> uh, but I think in general, I think we're, it's, that's what I think the show appeals to. Obviously, people, you know, we, we started and made the show originally for, for, you know, I'm in my 40s, people, like, for us. Uh, and then didn't even think or realize that, you know, kids would watch it as well. Kids going through puberty who are in the middle of experiencing so many of these things uh, right now. And so uh, I think it's resonated for different people at different ages uh, for different reasons, um, both sort of trying to understand where where they where we were when we were younger and how that's still affecting who we are and also people who are in the middle of it now. Um, and so it's just a it's just a massive life event. And, and one that we've tried to mine for, for jokes, but also to, to help people, frankly, feel not so alone inside of it. Would you say that the Big Mouth fans are your most rabid fan base? Like, of all the projects that you've done, movies and television, would you say Big Mouth is the most rabid? Bottle, bottle, it's got to be Bobby Bottle Service, right? Bobby Bottle Service. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, what I will say is, yeah, I think it, it's connected with, because, again, the subject matter is so universal. Right. I mean, I, I, I usually look at, like, tattoos as a as a marker for mm-hmm. how, let's say, rabid your fan base is. And, you know, to permanently put something on your body uh, that will be with you for the rest of time uh, is a pretty intense thing to do. And I cannot tell you the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of big mouth tattoos that we have been sent, you know, on social media. I mean, it's unbelievable. Hormone and not monster. Just like it's all the hormone monster. More, not just the hormone monsters. Like, there's insane stuff. Like, we mentioned an episode of a... Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this on uh, <laughs> terrestrial radio, but uh, there's a talk of a, a, a unicorn uh, having relations with Mr. Clean. Oh, yeah. And there, someone got that tattoo of that physical act. Do you know where on and their body they got it? It's on their body forever. Mm-hmm. And it's just, and I can't tell you how many things like that. I mean, in tiny little, you know, side tertiary characters, that, you know, that are just, it's, you know, it's unbelievable. So to me, that's a, I think that's a pretty fair kind of marker. And if that's a marker, then yes, the, the Big Mouth fans are rabid and passionate and um and and halloween being another fun way to, i think to sort of gauge and the the amount of halloween costumes we get every year from people is really it's it's amazing and, and incredibly gratifying big mouth um, live you know, at the greek on may 2nd netflix is a joke nick kroll is on with us now now last night nick you were at the peppermint club telling jokes and jake the nerd who works on our show was also there he claims he was very nervous before his set because he doesn't do a lot of stand-up and so he blew up mm-hmm. the bathroom at the peppermint club a few different times with the nervous <laughs> the nervous poops uh with he, a dog with a dog strapped to his front yes, yes. now do you that think that's him. a good gimmick he's got going for him because he's trying to crack into the world of comedy you've been successful he has not yet been successful, um, but he's kind of gone with this wearing the dog on stage as his newest gimmick. Do you like that move? Uh, you know, I didn't. I, I had to bounce after his my <laughs> set to go get to another show, so I didn't get to see him and the dog. But it's it's a conversation piece. Yeah. So there's no doubt about it. Well, uh, it. because you missed him, hold on. Well, I'm going to play you one of his jokes and let's see, see what Nick Kroll thinks. Be honest, uh, Nick. It's a big show tonight, man. A lot of famous people up here. That was a good time. We sold this bitch out, man. Yeah, Nick Kroll, you and the guy with the dog <laughs> sold this bitch out. Congratulations. I mean, I'm, you know, and very, I, I had a, I had a really mediocre set. I hadn't done stand up in, quite some time and I was coming from a numerous Passover satyrs, uh, dropped my, put my kids in bed and jumped over to the peppermint club and, and, uh, I just ate it. I really ate it. And, uh, you know, it was not, which is not what it's going to be like at the <laughs> big mouth live in the Greek. Um, but you know, you got to get warm again. You got to get out there and do sets and, and get comfortable again. And, and, um, and it was good. And then unfortunately for the peppermint club, I went and did, couple more shows later that night at, at Jam in the Van in Culver and, and had much. <laughs> so you don't set. get nervous poops like Jake does after not doing it for a while? I don't get, I don't get nervous poops, but I'm wondering if, if that's the dog. You know what I mean? Is that uh, I'm wondering, if, did, did, did the dog blow it out? Did he blow it out? Was the dog nervous? Jake, who blew you it know, out? Did you, We're Jake, symbiotic did you, thing, so you know, it's both of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give me another one. Now, when you're... 
<laughs> when you're blowing out the, the green room toilet and you've got no, a no, dog. I, I didn't want to do little... that. I went to the normal toilet. He went to the normal <laughs> okay. one because he didn't want to embarrass wearing, you. Were you wearing the dog <laughs> while you sat on the toilet? Sometimes. If I can get the handicap okay. stall, I don't. Okay, because then you can put him down, right? Yeah, and yeah. then, but otherwise, you're just sitting with this dog on your lap while you absolutely destroy a public bathroom. Totally. I mean, <laughs> he's got the chops. Sometimes for comedy, he right? uses the little coat hook, Nick. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to. I, I can't promise anything, but if you want to do that on stage during Big Mouth Live, wow. Then. Uh, man, I'm in. <laughs> go, buy, go buy a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Kroll, thanks for joining us on k Rock Big Mouth Live at the Greek, May 2nd. Netflix is a joke. Join us uh, in studio anytime, and thanks a lot, Nick Kroll. Right on. Thanks, Appreciate guys. you, dude. Uh, there we go. We got to go. We're out of time. That's it. Oh, my goodness. That's the show. I couldn't even play the entire uh, Jake the Nerd joke. I know. I right. can't even play no, all the bombs that happened. No, Just the bombs. the bombs that he left in yeah. the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick shouldn't feel bad. He did not bomb. Jake bombed all yeah. over that place. Uh, takeaways today's show. We gotta go. Uh, 626, my takeaway is if Nana dies, send her sex toys to Allie and she'll put them to good use. That's right. 818, my takeaway is C4 Energy Drink is the new Eagle. 562, Don't fall for it. my takeaway is let's get funky. And 310, my takeaway is NASA's Voyager explores faraway lands. We did learn that earlier <laughs> today in the show. It's an educational show, clearly. <laughs> if you missed anything we talked about today. Uh, I gotta get the hey, mic fixed. Good. It's, it's terrible. Really, game <laughs> over for this thing. Uh, anyway, have a great rest of your day. We'll do it tomorrow. Try to do it better. The Showtime podcast, the bonus podcast, unfiltered, uncensored. Happening we'll next. Unnecessary. Up. Unnecessary. Thank you, Omar. That is also true. Unpaid. Uh, unpaid. That's mm -hmm. right. Unrewarding. I mean, there's a lot of words we can use, but we're going to do uns. it anyway. And then hopefully it will be ununploaded. Uh, but if it is, you can download <laughs> it at your leisure. What's your takeaway from today's show, Jake the Nerd? It's all about pops and drops. Pops and drops, baby. Yeah. And I'm in. Omar Khan, takeaway? Uh, Vanessa's going to get put down. Yeah. <laughs> Allie, got it. R.I.P. Vanessa. Takeaway, Allie? My takeaway is Lizzie is the throat goat. Throat goat. Have a great day. We'll do it tomorrow. Try to do it better. Bye. Hey, thanks for checking out some of our radio show on K-Rock. Just between you and me, we're about to fire Allie, so hopefully you didn't get used to her too much. But thanks for checking it out, and we appreciate you checking out the live radio show. And, uh, hey, what are you guys doing? Nothing. But you're, doing, you're filming something. Aren't they supposed to be involved in this? We're not filming anything. There's a camera right there. Just uh, part of the... Bye!